<clears throat> Hello YouTube, this is Question Be Ryan. This is about eh, this is just later on during the night after the last video, same day and all. But um after the last video I felt like you needed a case study. So we covered the switches, we sw we did the the um, cases, we did arrays. This is just like a general like example of what exactly you could do. And um, surprisingly, it didn't really use all that much. I just had to import scanner, and everything else is all um, Java-based. So, <clears throat> I get right down to this. If I'm going to cover this in 15 minutes, I'm just going to call this a case study, example, whatever. This is, I named it um, YouTube Text Adventure. It's not really an adventure as much example, since, you know, it's not that much. It's, uh, if I scroll down, it's less than 100 lines. I could probably slim it down too if I had to, but um, I have two different classes. Uh, uh, this is the, this contains the main, right there. This is my, um, I guess you could say rough draft, and I just copied it over here later on and made it better. But um, you can do it either way, you could just make it one, just keep improving. But um, I, I want to do a comparison, like this is how it looks all like mashed up, and this is how it looks sort of organized. But okay, I'll get right into it. We have our class, the beginning of our class. I have an int money, uh, start at 100 cash. These are comments, by the way, single lines, okay? That means that the when you run the program, it doesn't read here. Can't read this text, okay? But it doesn't extend to the next line. If you want to do that, you have to add the star, and then there you go. This is multi-line can't read this. I'm not sure. Yeah. There you go. I just want to explain that real quick. Um, okay. Getting right now to it. Then we have an int location. This, this is used later on. Uh, we have an int i. That's not used for anything, but um, I, I picked this up when I was reading. I'll give you a link later on, but um, for loops usually, I I showed you for loops. I like I'm um, for int i equals as equals zero i less than yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure I showed you that. It, it's basically a while loop except it except it um has values. But um for loops usually have i the int i equals zero. So what you what you usually want to do instead of making like a dip making a different i for each for loop. You have one i, and then whenever you make the for loop, i equals zero. These do not change anything because i is equal to zero. Okay, then it does this, so i is equal to whatever, and then it gets here, and then i is equal to zero again. So then, um, yeah. String name is your player name, your player name. Uh, string array locations, that means mini in one thing. Instead of having three different strings with different names, you have one string array containing a name for each for each thing. These are location city one, city two, village one. There's no difference really. Uh, string array commands, just like the I just put the commands into one. Uh, scanner input. Instead of making a new input here and making a input here, just have one input and make it a new scanner system in. Um. Okay, right. Where am I? Uh, boolean for if the game is running, which is true because it's running. Uh, boolean if you're in a town is equal to true since you start in city one. Uh, by the way, commands is commands. Exit, go to locations, and go to marketplace. Uh, this is the constructor system dot out dot print. What is your name, traveler? Input equals news scanner, and then name equals input. That means that whatever you input, okay, it grabs the line of your input and turns it into name. So I'll just give a. So then I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to run it, and I'm going to go through it again system.out.print line, welcome to the game, and then your name. Game loop calls up this, 
A game loop is basically like the engine of your program. Game loops are usually used for things with graphics, but in this case, I sort of want everything more organized and um, separated. So while game running, okay, if there's nothing here, then okay, this is what it means. If it's all by itself, it means while the game is running, okay, while it is indeed running, because true is the automatic whatever, okay. That means while the game is running, this is while the game is not running, okay. The exclamation mark is like bad, sort of whatever. Uh, System dot out dot print line name name money money. This means new line n for new uh, location locations location okay. Look this is the locations array okay. What this means is this bracket right here means it is the number of whatever. So location is equal to zero. So your location okay is whatever is is in the zero value of locations. So this is the zero value, zero, one, two, okay? So in locations, zero, locations, location, which is zero, means your location is city one, okay? And then read text commands, uh, calls the method that checks for commands, okay? Input equals new scanner system.in, this is the input for whatever. And then string input text is the next line. It grabs the line of text. And this, I have a switch statement, which if you go into the last video, means like a... It's it's basically like a internalized uh, if, okay? Switch, and then we're using this as a test, okay? It'll take whatever this is, and it'll compare it. So just in case input text is equal to exit, then game running goes false. So when that stops running, okay, if game is not running, if game running is equal to false, then system.exit0. That means the program will end right away, okay? And then case go to city1, location is equal to 0, because city1 is in the 0 value. And then in town is equal to true, because you're in a town. And go to city2 is location equal to 1. This is in the 1, so city2. And then village one is location two zero one two. It was the third one to the right. And then case go to market. Okay, if you're in a town, then go to marketplace. Okay, marketplace is another method I have here. Okay, input equals new scanner system in string input text equals input dot next line. You know standard stuff. And then the switch statement input text. Just in case you type buy fish, then system dot out print line you bought one fish. And then money is equal to money minus 10. That's how I think of it, okay? Money is equal to, okay, money minus 10. And then break, okay? It'll go through that, and then it'll go back, okay? Go to market if not in town, system.out.println, sorry, but you're not in town, because seriously, why would you have a marketplace in the middle of nowhere? Uh, just in case you type locations for i, okay, there's the i, i is equal to zero, i is less than locations.length, okay, what that means is that locations has three values, okay, and i is equal to zero. So the i, one, well, i is less than locations.length, okay, there are three values, which means the length of locations is three, okay, i is equal to zero, well, i is less than three, then do this, then, after you finish the code here, i++. plus plus. So an i is equal to 1, i is less than 3, so then run the code again. So an i is equal to 2, which is less than 3, and so on. And then it gets to i is equal to, t well, whatever. It's i is equal to 2, run, i, mm, 2 is less than 3. So then run the code, then i++, plus plus. and it's like, i is equal to 3, wait, uh, 3 is not less than 3, so you know what, just leave it, leave it, go. So and what this means, locations i, okay, means that it'll grab the value of i, so i is equal to 0, okay, i is equal to 0, means that system out a print line, locations 0, which is the value of i, so let me go down here, oh, hey, city 1, okay, because it outputs all of the different locations. And then case commands, i is equal to zero, i less than commands dot length, i plus plus system dot out dot print line, your commands i, okay. 
and then here it has a command, so it'll output this, then this, then this, and so on and so forth. And then I have a default, like, um, none, none of this, you, you put something that is not equal to any of the commands, so by default, not a valid command. Okay, like I did the, um, oh wow, I just lost my, lost my brain for a second, the, um, conveyor belt is basically, so it doesn't go through any of these, so default, just, you know, not a valid, um, command. So when I talked about this, okay, and then usually, and, this is how you usually want to do this, okay? Uh, and switch. This is usually how you want to do your code, okay? You want to try and compartmentalize it, so that if there's an error, you know right where it is, okay? If you cram everything into one big method, it's like, oh hey, there's an error in this method. Well, it's the only method, so then I have to comb through there. Although, usually, it'll give you the line number of what's wrong. But, if you have a big program with, like, you know, a window and everything, it'll say what's wrong, what the error is, but it usually won't say the line, okay? So then, you want to compartmentalize, okay? This, all this stuff, is for reading the commands from the text, okay? So, you know, just toss that in there, okay? It's all related to each other, it's for the commands. And then marketplace is where you buy stuff, okay? So make its own method where all of the stuff that has to do with buying goes. Um, game loop is for making the game engine work. And then the constructor is what makes it run so that it, um, what? What? Oh. Okay, there we go. So a new class two constructor because classes don't have a, um, don't have brackets. If I go up, see there's no brackets. So it means in here, okay. So it'll do this, okay. This is not a print line, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how you have if you are in a town slash city. This is usually how I want to do it with lots and lots of comments because. You might say, oh, hey, I know how this works, I know why it works, so I don't have to put comments. Well, what if you're sharing the source code, okay? What if you're sharing it with other people? If you're working on a group project, they're like, I have no idea what this does, just delete it, and I'll write my own code, okay? And two, let's say that, you know, you just completely forget about it. It's half finished, and you just, like, toss it into the, the abyss of your hard drive. So then, it's like, say months a year later and you're like oh hey this is half finished I think I'll finish it from a year ago and then it's like oh my god what does this do just like pff, why am I making a new scanner when I've got this here and just you know, completely screw everything up so and yeah that's usually what the comments are for um yeah so this is this was basically a lecture, a case study, whatever you want to call it, and I, um, I hope you guys liked it. I hope I explained everything sufficiently, although we didn't learn anything new, sort of like reaffirm what you knew, sort of like, um, just cement it. I'm gonna take a drink, my throat's all dry. Excuse me, but um, hmm. But anyways, I know that there's static in the video. That is because my video recorder has a built-in amplifier, which if I turn up all the way, there's static. But you guys can hear me clear. Um, like I said, I hope I explained everything sufficiently. I hope you liked it. Um, I hope I use a good example. I hope I explained everything clearly. I'm, I'm, I've never been good at that, but I'm about to hit my 15 minutes, so I'm going to say like, subscribe, comment, tell me what I did wrong, if I did anything wrong, give me suggestions, like what to do next, okay? Because I don't exactly have like a lesson plan here, so like, comment, subscribe, uh, opinions, and whatnot, so um, I'll see you in next episode.